What's up gamers, Cryptico here, and welcome back to Lowering the Mark, a show where I analyze the current and former world records of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe time trial runs to see how these records get faster over time. We'll look at elements such as the loadout, racing lines, and mushroom usage to better understand what's bringing these times down. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the notification bell to be the first to know when my videos go live. Welcome to Season 9, the final season of Lowering the Mark. This time around, we'll be reviewing the courses I skipped over during the first 8 seasons. If you're a fan of any of these 7 tracks, then this season is dedicated to you specifically. Sorry it took so long to get these out. As always, be sure to check back every Monday at 11am Central Time for a new episode. Quick thanks to everyone that got us this far, I wouldn't be here without your support, so without further ado, let's begin the final chapter of Lowering the Mark. For today's episode, we'll be taking a look at another top 2 Sub-Zero course at its normal speed, Big Blue at 150cc. On April 30th, 2017, the world record for this run was set at 1 minute 25.833 seconds by Australian player Hayashi. Fast forward to March 1st, 2021, and the record was set at 1 minute 23.583 seconds by the Dutch player Stur. That's a 2.2 second improvement between records and a 2.6% faster time. Our former world record holder Hayashi has broken 11 world records on this course only and has spent a total of 187 days holding at least one world record. Our current world record holder Stir has broken 263 world records across 15 unique runs and is closing in on 1500 days holding at least one of his 7 current world records. At pre-release, this world record was just a frame over 127 and within a few days it had made its way down to 124 thanks to Matu, Hayashi, and Shinpu. After that, Hayashi would continue his little run on the course and set 8 of the next 12 world records, 3 of which were tied by other players. Now with the record at 124.433, Japanese player Rocky stepped into the ring and took over a tenth of a second off of that, then Velocity and Lemon stepped in, then Rocky would establish one of the longest lasting world record reigns this game has ever seen. Consisting of 10 consecutive records, Rocky took the time all the way down to 123, and his .933 stood as the record for over 600 days. In late 2019, Velocity would actually tie that record and it wouldn't be until April of 2020 before someone went faster. That someone was actually two people, Ruriku and Stir, the former of which dropped three world records and took 83 milliseconds off that time. The latter of which took the course over circa June 2020 and dropped 10 consecutive records on his way down to this 123.583. In total, the record was broken 60 times by only 10 different players. These loadouts are pretty similar in performance despite looking so different. Hayashi goes with the combo of Morton driving the Blue Falcon with the Slim Wheels and the Paper Glider. Stir goes with Wario driving the Mach 8 with the Leaf Tires, also with the Paper Glider. Both players have pretty similar stats all around with slight variances and only a few of them. Hayashi has the edge in top speed and was able to match Stir's handling, but he's got Hayashi right back with the edge in acceleration and mini turbo stats. Stir also has a 33% advantage in the grip stat, which for this race is actually pretty useful. Big Blue is without a doubt a top 5 track in this game, and anyone that has it ranked below A on their tier list is lying to themselves. The layout is amazing, the music is top notch, and the bragging rights you gain after beating your friends are second to none. The time trial is so good that it needed a few extra sections in order for me to better break down these world records. Let's have a look. Hayashi hits the rocket start out of the gate and bears left down this straight path. He then charges up two super mini turbos down this spiral and also collects 6 coins. After that, he drifts off this ramp for another super mini turbo and goes left towards this zipper ramp to close out S1. Stir also hits the rocket start and bears left out of the gate. After hopping around for no reason, he'll get a quick mini turbo, then chain this long ultra mini turbo down the spiral up to just before this next ramp. After that, he too drifts off of it and edge grinds on this turn for the super mini turbo to close out the section. Right out of the gate, that looked pretty similar, but Stir ultimately comes out ahead because of his tighter line and longer lasting mini turbos. He leads Hayashi by 3 tenths of a second at the end of S1. Now about 90% of S2 is done the same way by both racers. That starts with this jump boost and quick mini turbo onto the conveyor belt. After that, Hayashi and Stir drift off this next ramp and use their first mushroom to cut out this hairpin turn and get the super mini turbo. What follows is a quick mini turbo, then another mushroom cut through this next turn for another super mini turbo. Here's where it gets different. Hayashi just tricks off the glider and flies straight to the other side to close out the first lap. 
after his super mini turbo, Stir realigns for this quick drift off the glider for, you guessed it, a motion glider across the gap. Even Big Blue cannot hide from this strat. You all know the drill. Stir drifts off the ramp, and with motion controls on, flicks his controller towards the right so he can glide down to the platform much faster than Hayashi did. It may not have looked like it, but that motion glider was pretty much the only time save here. Stir executed it to perfection and goes up on Hayashi by nearly a second going into the second lap. Hayashi carries a drift all the way down to the front end of this platform for the Ultra Mini Turbo, skipping that entire first turn in the process. After missing the next Mini Turbo, he drifts off that platform all the way down to the next lowest one for the Super Mini Turbo, cutting out that next turn in the process. Now he's centered in the water stream as he chains a Super, Normal, then another Normal Mini Turbo through this winding path before the Cannon Glider. He'll fast glider his way across there to close out the lap. Stir also carries the Ultra Mini Turbo off the track but lands just before this ramp so he can get the jump boost. After that, he smoothly drifts off the track again for that same cut and Super Mini Turbo. He closes out the lap with a Super, Normal, and another Super Mini Turbo before fast glidering to the lap marker at the end of this section. That time, Stir added a lot of time to his lead partially thanks to that extra jump boost and longer lasting Super Mini Turbos through the back half of that lap. He's up on Hayashi by over 1.5 seconds going into the final lap. Hayashi hits the jump boost off this ramp and hits as many zippers as he can while avoiding the red conveyor belts. At the end of this back straight, he'll grab a jump boost off the left ramp into a super mini turbo around the hairpin. He'll get that spin booster and a quick mini turbo on a tight line around that next turn to close out what is now S4. Stir just hops over the ramp and begins hitting those same zippers while staying off the red belts. At the end of this straight, he'll grab his jump boost off the right ramp and chain the ultra mini turbo around the hairpin. He too gets the spin booster and tightly chains this super mini turbo to that as he closes out the section. Outside of the ultra mini turbo and better line through the conveyor belts, there's not much to pick apart from either player through S4. What we can pick out is now Stir leads by over 1.7 seconds going into S5. To close out the race, Hayashi grabs this super mini turbo around the first turn and chains a normal one to that, across the zipper, and off the track onto the green path. He follows that up with an even larger turn skip and carries the drift all the way to just before this final ramp where he'll grab a jump boost. After that, he'll stay on a pretty strict line and use his last mushroom to cut through this off-road and rides that boost all the way to the finish line. Fresh off the Super Mini Turbo, Stir chains another one to that and similarly goes for this quick Mini Turbo off the purple path. He then drifts off the green path and carries that Super Mini Turbo all the way up to the ramp and grabs the jump boost. One quick Mini Turbo later, he'll use his final mushroom to cut through the off-road and rides out what is left of that boost to the finish line. He'd end up posting a time that was 2.2 seconds faster than Hayashi's former world record. So by taking a slightly better line, grabbing more longer lasting mini turbos, and motion glider, Stir was able to cap off his 10th consecutive record on this course and finally bring this record down to a 123.5. During that span, he's taken nearly 3 tenths of a second off his initial 123.85 and secured what would become one of the longest lasting records in the game's history. It took a near perfect run to get here, and now we're left wondering how much further down can this record go. The best known splits for this run show that we might actually be getting really close to a max world record here. Stir owns all three of these splits, and none of them are more than a half second faster than his own world record laps. He could slightly improve upon his first two laps, but his closing lap is about as fast as it can be right now. The best known sometime being a perfect 0.5 is very appealing because it hints at the possibility of a 0.4. If we could just find one more frame to cut at any point during the race, we may very well see that mark one day. The only question left is, who's going to be the one to do it? The Worldwide Top 10 consists of 5 national and 3 continental record holders. Stir sits at the top, over a tenth of a second behind him is Asian record holder Sanano, and just one frame behind him in third is Rocky. Alberto is down there in fourth, and we have a tie for fifth place between Fukusu and American record holder Vincent. The bottom four of this leaderboard share less than a tenth of a second in separation and include players such as Kuroden, Shiranui, Scary, and Pai. Even though it's only by just over a tenth, Stir has separated himself from the rest of this pack by a wide margin on what is one of the most optimized courses in this game. At that point, it becomes incredibly more difficult to cut those few frames and move up the leaderboard, so it's unlikely anyone else will be able to challenge Stir's 500-day world record. That's all for episode 81 and the first episode of season 9. 
Be sure to stay tuned through the end of this year as we wrap up this series with the remaining courses. You won't want to miss it. If you enjoyed this video, like and share it with your friends, and comment on which of these courses you'd like me to analyze next. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.